Welcome to part three of our Northeast PCA video series on autocross. This segment covers the worker responsibilities. Remembering that this is a club event run by volunteers, every participant at an autocross event will have a worker assignment. As a novice, you are most likely to be assigned to a flag station. However, there are many other jobs and you need to be acquainted with them. You may see people who appear to not have a job, but they will have had an assignment that required a concentrated amount of work at the beginning of the day. Reliable performance of the course workers is critical to making the event run smoothly and safely. Autocross is a social event, but not out on the course. The more efficient and accurate everyone is at their job, the more runs we can get in the day while ensuring a safe and fun event. Most novices' work assignments will be at a flag station. This doesn't mean the job is easy or unimportant. It's the foundation of a safe and efficient autocross day. The job involves maintaining a safe racing environment, reporting penalty cones and off courses, One cone and six. keeping the course intact by replacing cones that are hit. So let's go over the responsibilities of the flag station worker. When it's your turn to work, go immediately to your assignment. If you drive to your assignment, make sure that your car is well off the course and not in the direct line of sight of drivers on the course. There will typically be two to four workers assigned to each station. Spread out so that you can get to cones quickly. Make sure you're standing in a safe position. Consider the direction a spinning car would likely take and position yourself on the opposite side of the course. When you arrive at your station, familiarize yourself with the course. Know where the cones go, make sure they're all chalked, and if there are old chalk boxes near a cone, cross them out so you won't get confused. Make sure there's a radio and a red flag at your station when you arrive and that the radio is turned on. The person holding the red flag should have it pointing down but held ready to wave and not flapping in the breeze. When the course is hot, you must not be sitting. There is also no camera or cell phone use allowed. Make sure the person with the radio understands how it works and pays close attention. Call in cones and off courses as follows. Control, this is station two, one cone, car 77. Or control, this is station two, two cones on car 12. Control will acknowledge your call, usually by saying, thank you station two. If you don't hear this confirmation, ask, Control, did you get that call from Station 2? If your call was not clear to Control, you may be asked to repeat it. Radio calls may not have been heard properly because you were running to replace the cone while calling in, the wind may have been louder than your voice, or another call was being made simultaneously by mistake. Also, please wait until Control acknowledges a prior call before calling in a new penalty to help ensure all penalties are accurately recorded in the timing tent. It's a good idea for the person with the radio to be the last person at your station. This way, they have another chance to read the car's numbers after seeing it hit cones or going off course. Make sure you understand the rules about cones and off courses. Remember, this is a competition and you are the critical link in the scoring system. While you should always be aware of the location of cars, Look at the cones, not the cars, as you are spotting. You may not see a cone hit on the side opposite you. Watch the rear of the car as it goes by. Reset down cones as quickly as possible. You'll need to run in order to place the cones before the next car comes by. Remember that cars are arriving every 20 seconds or so. So if you're not absolutely sure you can reset a cone safely, then just wait and let the next car by before resetting it. Each cone down is a two second penalty for that driver. If a cone is moved out of its box and still standing, it is also a penalty. Pointer cones do not count as penalties, but must be reset to their original position. If a cone is moved but still touches the box, any part of the box, it's not a penalty, but you still need to go out and reset it to the middle of the box. If a car misses a gate or otherwise drives off the course indicated by the cones, the driver is disqualified for that run. Call in and off course on that driver. If the course is not intact when a driver gets to your station, they are eligible for a rerun, but do not automatically get one. In order to get the rerun, the driver must slow to a near stop, 
point to the course problem, and then you must acknowledge that you have seen this and wave the driver on, fix the problem, and then report the rerun, including the car number, to control. Workers without a radio should use hand signals to communicate to the worker that has the radio. An arm over your head holding a cone, if possible, indicates a cone. Arms crossed over your head indicates an off course. A safe sign, as used by baseball referees, should be made if you reset a cone, but it's not a penalty. An arm circling over your head means a rerun. When a safety issue arises, vigorously wave the red flag to catch the driver's attention, but do not attempt to move into the path of the oncoming car. You'll typically need to wave the flag when there is a spin or a disabled car on the course and it will not be able to be safely underway by the time the next car arrives. Since drivers are looking ahead on the course and may not see the flag in their peripheral vision, you should also yell loudly to help get their attention. Wave the drivers on as soon as it's safe so that there's minimum disruption. Don't forget to call in the rerun. At the end of your worker shift, wait until notified by control that the course is no longer hot and that the run group has finished. Then quickly come in and prepare for your runs. If it's the last run of the day, pick up the cones and stack them in a few large piles so they can be picked up, then walk or drive back to the paddock. So this is it. I hope this segment was informative and helped you get ready for your first autocross. See you out on the course.